So what you just heard was my version of Dennis McGee's um, De Villiers Two-Step. It's a really great tune. I've, I've been playing this tune for years, and I've always had a lot of fun with it. Um, so I decided maybe this would, this would be a good one to teach you guys. Okay, so um, a little bit about Dennis McGee. He's probably my favorite of all the Cajun fiddlers that have passed away, and um, Certainly there are a lot of people who feel the same way about, about him. Um, so what's interesting about Dennis is that he plays um, a very old style of Cajun fiddle. You know, he's playing all these lances and mazurkas and all sorts of different things that didn't, didn't register into the dance hall Cajun sound that evolved in the uh, 20th century. Um, but it's interesting because, you know, he's there for the string band era. He's there for, for Amadeo Duan, um, and his playing is just really, really cool and interesting. Um, so, um, the thing about this tune, um, is it's all, all of it is built around a D arpeggio. It's a good lesson in what you can do with just a few notes. So... Let's go ahead and, and break it apart. So the A part, I'll go ahead and I'll play it real slow. So let's go ahead and, and let's break that apart. So it, it um, starts with just a simple D uh, major arpeggio. So we have ring finger on the A string, and then we have F sharp on the, the E string, and then we're doing that with index, 
and then we have our A on the ring finger. And so we're gonna we're gonna play D F sharp A A. And then we're gonna slide into F sharp. And then on, on the up bow, we're gonna do this real, just, just gonna really quickly catch a little G that goes down to F sharp. So what we have so far is And then that's, that's the whole first phrase. The second phrase, um, now Dennis is a very improvisatory player, so um, he plays all sorts of di different things. So don't take this as like the way to play it. Um, I re definitely recommend you go and, um, and listen, listen to his version because uh, there's a lot of really cool little variations. It's a little bit, it's a little bit tighter than um, some of his his other tunes where he's way more free um, in what he does. But nonetheless, there's still a few little different things. Anyway, all that to say, what I like to do is I I like to change things up a little bit. So instead of D F sharp A A, I like to do D F sharp A and then go back to the F sharp for the second phrase. So, um, and then we, once again, throw that little slide into F sharp and then up bow and just a little trip, not trill, but a little pull off from G to F sharp again. So uh, from phrases one to two we have, And then uh, what we can do is re we can repeat phrase one again. So, so here's phrase one, phrase two, and then phrase three. And then this is where things change up a bit. So um, we're gonna go Uh, and that's going to be phrase four. So we have open E. And then um, we have ring finger on the A string. And then we have index on the A string for a B note. And then middle finger for C sharp. And then back to D on the ring finger. And this is something that he doesn't do, but I like to do the same kind of little, little pull off that he does from the G to the F sharp. Uh, when I get to here on that D, I like to do E to D sometimes. So the way I do it goes. Um, and then if we put all that together, we'll have And then after that, so let's play that one more time and you can play along with me. So I accidentally varied it up a little bit, but that's okay. And it just goes to show you how Stuff like this is very flexible. Um, I mean, not all the time, but in this in this tune, we have we have some liberties here. So whether you choose to do A or F sharp at the end of those um, in the middle of those phrases is kind of up to you. But that's just how I like to do it, and and I I don't really stay consistent to one thing or another really. Um, so let's, anyway, let's move on to the next phrase. So I'll play what we have so far and then we'll go on to the next part.
So we repeat phrase one again. And then what we do is we're gonna walk the scale down. Um, we're gonna go from E, our open E, and we're gonna go the, the, downwards through the D, D major scale till we get to A. So we'll do E. Now we're on the A string and we're gonna do ring finger C sharp. We're gonna do middle C sharp. We're gonna do um, index finger B. And then we're gonna and then we're gonna end up on um, open open A. Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna play the B part. So that's the first way that, that Dennis plays it. And that's kind of what I like to stick to. Um, but he, he has a second variation that he plays that's um, fewer notes, but no less complicated. Um, but let's talk about this. Because, so in the recording, he plays it by, um, he, play, he plays that line uh, while he's singing and he also plays it at the very end by itself and um, That's a little bit different than the standard dance hall format kind of thing If I was to play this with an accordionist though Then I would change things quite a bit. That's usually what I do is if I'm going to play with an accordionist then um, I'll actually start it on that, that melody line that we just played. And then we'll treat the part that we've been focusing on, uh, on before, the, the little arpeggio thing. Um, all of a sudden, we'll treat that as the turn. So let's, let's go over what that is for a second. Um, if you're not terribly familiar with Cajun music, um, typically people don't call things the A or the B part. Uh, it's more commonly people will refer to the, to the sung part um, that the tune starts on as the melody. And then that little arpeggiated, um, very rhythmic, less melodically distinct part uh, that comes after that, we'll, they'll call that the turn. Um, and the way the format works is the accordion takes it in, plays the melody, plays the turn, and maybe does that again. And then the singer um, will sing the melody, and then maybe the pedal steel or the fiddle um, will take a ride, which is um, more or less the melody and then the accordion will pick it up and do the turn. So, all that to say, if I'm gonna play this with an accordion, I'll actually start it on. Um, and then I'll play. We'll do two, uh, two of each. So if I start a tune like that, um, then usually the accordionist can pick it up pretty fast and then we can just go straight into the dance hall form that, that um, most people are familiar with. And it works great. Now it's not what Dennis McGee does here, um, but it works really well and it facilitates, um, it facilitates jams. But I also like to uh, I, li I also like to play it the way Dennis McGee played it sometimes, um, where if we're going to keep the terminology the same, we don't play the melody as an instrumental till till the end, and that's kind of fun. Um, so there's a lot of different ways that you can do it. Thing, um, it's kind of up to you and what you think will be best in your context. Um, but 
it's good to know what people are doing on recordings, and it's also good to know what the conventions of the style are. So um, that said, let's go ahead and let's break that, that thing apart. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide um, from ring up to, um, from we're gonna slide on ring from F sharp to A on the E string. So we're gonna go, And then you can do these little finger trills that he does in this this slidey area where he like does a little like tap on on the B note with his pinky. And a lot of times when he does stuff like that, he'll accompany it with like a little bit of uh, a faster bow movement. Um, that's something that is so characteristic of Dennis McGee. Um, He's very, he's, he, he has a very, like, effective and variable way that he uses his bow. So anyway, that, that's the first part. And then we do A, F sharp, slide into A again. And now we're going to do um, this line. Um, and so what that is, is it's going to be uh, A, F sharp, G, A, B. In fingers, that's going to be ring, index, middle, ring, pinky. Um, and then we're going to go back to ring again and then do pinky. So it's going to go... So after that whole, uh, we just do a uh, we just do a scale going downwards from A down to D. So we do A G F sharp E D in fingers. That is ring middle index open cross over to A string and do D with your ring finger. So in total, what we have is. And I like to throw in this little sort of like slide up. No, it's not really a slide up. It's kind of like a roll. We're going from B, we're doing B, C sharp, D, but we're just doing it uh, really fast. Um, so you don't, you don't really, when you do that kind of roll, you don't necessarily want it, you don't want it to be like that. You want it to be like, um, and so that's that's um, that's what we have in the B part so far. So let's go ahead on and and play what we've got, and then move on to the next area. And then after that, we're gonna um, do um, F sharp, G, A. And then, uh, oh yeah, we're gonna do F sharp G A B A, and then, and then we're gonna do that same kind of um, a sort of like roll again. So so that's gonna be. So. And you could also, if you want to be like Dennis, you could, you could, um, I don't know if he necessarily does this on the recording, but you could go back to F sharp and slide up. Maybe you'd want to do that with index. And actually doing it with ring, going from F sharp to A with ring might actually be a little bit better because the, the next section, um, it'll fit the next section a little bit better. But let's go, let's go over what we have so far. So, Uh, 
and um, I almost started to go into the next area. So let's actually complete the phrase, and, and it'll uh, uh, and it'll help make sense of what we're doing. So we're gonna go. I think it's from an up bow. We're gonna do a slide down from A to um, G sharp. <laughs> And then we're going to do F sharp, E. And then we're going to do C sharp, B, A on the A string. So that whole area is... So let's play what we've got so far. And then after that, this is this is the ending of of um, uh, of this phrase. And I love this part. So he, he goes. Actually, more like something like that. So basically, we're gonna do ring for A, um, and then we're gonna do F sharp, and then we're gonna do um, a three-part slide. So, well, it's, I guess it's a two-part slide. Um, we're gonna we're gonna go from open to kind of in between F and F sharp, back to open. And then we're going to end, or whatever helps you get back. So that whole area is. Um, or, well, sometimes I'll play it like. Um, now, that is something that shows up in old time music a lot, that um, that bow pulse. But one thing that's interesting about Dennis, um, for all you old time fiddlers out there, is that um, he does a lot of things that are typically associated with old time fiddle today. Um, and that pulse is one of those things. Um, you know, and he does it in a very particular way. It's not, it's not quite how old time fiddlers do it per se. It's not all, um, but it, it's, it's the same technique, just used a little bit differently, and it's really cool. So I, I that's another good reason to check out Dennis McGee, to expand your toolkit of what you already know how to do. Um, so anyway. Let's go ahead and let's play the rest of that B part. Oh, and I threw in, before we do the... Um, I threw in a little, like, C-sharp E thing. And you don't have to do that. But um, that is both the um, turn and the melody if we're, um, if we're playing it in a dance hall format. That's how it will be referred to. But if we're playing it like a fiddle tune, then might be the A part or it might be the B part, depending on how you want to arrange it. Um, I do like to play it as an A part. Um, and then this being the A or the B. So it's kind of up to you how you want to refer to it. Uh, the, the important thing is clarity. Uh, just making sure that, that people understand what you mean. So if you hear people talking about um, arrangements in a particular way, it's always always good to try and, and speak to how other people are speaking. Okay, 
So, and before I go, um, one thing that's also very important is um, the backup, the, the, uh, or what's also known as seconding. Um, so Sadie Corville is doing backup, and they're very consistent in those roles. Dennis leads the tune, and Sadie backs it up. And Sadie is a genius at seconding, I think. There's a lot of things that he does that are that are really cool and worth listening to. Um, now we're not going to get into all that today, but eventually we will. Uh, we will explore some of Sadie's backup style. But I'll just show this this way of seconding to you guys, um, just just to keep it simple. Um, so. Uh, what you can do is That's actually pretty close to what I played um, on the the backup for this recording um, that you heard in the very beginning. So um, what we're doing is is we're using D and F sharp, D on the pinky on the G string, and then F sharp on D string with our middle finger. And we're playing them as a double stop, and you can slide into either of those notes. Um, or you can hammer them on, but you're going to want to hold them down, um, for the appropriate length of, 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 um, uh, of measures. So we have one, two, three, four, one. Oh, that's maybe not the best way to count it. So we have one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And those are the chords for the whole thing. Now, what was the other chord that, that, that I did? Uh, that's going to be our A chord. And this isn't the only way, only way to do it. I'm just, you know, trying to be real quick with this. But I'm doing C sharp and an E. Your C sharp is going to be ring finger on your G string and your E is going to be index finger on your D string. And same thing, you can kind of slide into stuff, you can do a little trilly thing, you can do a little arpeggio, you can also do like a little kind of thing. Dennis does that a lot and so does Sadie. Um, but your goal is, is to just create something really steady. So you don't want to go overboard with the slides. You really kind of want to make it fit the tune. Um, another thing you can do with seconding is you can also play, uh, the melody in a low octave. That's pretty fun. Um, so anyway, what I would say though, if you're new to se seconding, and even if you're not, Simple is always good. Um, all right. Well, I hope you all have fun with that. Um, and let me know in the comments what you think. Um, if you have any questions or, um, or, or ideas or tunes that you, that you would like me to do, um, just feel free to let me know. All right. Have a good one.